Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Nursing Notes Musculoskeletal System 128 Items Questions and Answers 1. A 17-year-old male is admitted to the surgery floor with a gunshot wound to the chest and a chest tube. He has a cough with hemoptysis. Appropriate nursing PPE would include Scene safety and staff safety, using personal protective equipment or PP, universal precautions, and body substance isolation or BSI, should be the highest priority when taking care of patients. Appropriate attire prior to entering the patient's room should include eye protection, goggles, face mask, protective waterproof gown, head cover, and possibly shoe covering should be worn in order to protect against contagious viruses and other organisms in case this patient coughs up blood into the vicinity of healthcare workers. Assume each and every patient has a dreaded deadly virus, HIV, hepatitis, etc. Treat them according and protect yourself and co-workers. 2. A dislocation is defined as When the articulating surfaces of a joint come out of position and may result from trauma, diseases that affect the joint, or congenital weaknesses. 3. Proper nursing evaluation of a dislocated or fracture extremity will include Immobilize and elevate the affected joint or limb, apply ice water bag as indicated, assess neurovascular status before and after reduction, including strength of pulse, capillary refill time, sensation, movement, pain, and color of skin. With compromised blood arterial flow, a patient may present with the six P's, pulses, polar, cold, pain, paresthesia, paralysis, and perfusion. 4. A radial pulse on exam indicates a BP of at least 80 mm of mercury. 5. What is the most common cause of infection in bones, osteomyelitis? Staphylococcus aureus, 90%. 6. Name 5 clinical signs of basilar skull fracture. Periorbital ecchymosis, raccoon's eyes, retroauricular ecchymosis, battle sign, otorrhea or rhinorrhea, hemotympanum or bloody ear discharge, and 1st, 2nd, 7th and 8th cranial nerve deficits. 7. A trauma patient is admitted to the surgical floor. Within the first hour, he is noted to have a decreasing level of consciousness and an enlarging right pupil. What should the nurse suspect? Probably uncle herniation with oculomotor nerve compression. 8. What is the most common cause of shock in patients with blunt chest trauma? Pelvic or extremity fractures. 9. What should be checked prior to inserting a chest tube in an intubated patient with respiratory distress? and decreased breath sounds on one side? Position of the ET tube. One simple formula for calculation the depth or markings at the teeth is to multiply the tube size by 3, which gives the centimeters at the teeth of the ET tube should be positioned. Example, a 7F endotracheal tube should be inserted, so the markings at the teeth are 7 times 3 is equal to 21 centimeters. 10. A trauma patient is admitted to the med -surg floor. Within the first few hours, a crepitance is detected under the anterior chest skin consistent with subcutaneous emphysema. What should the nurse suspect? Pneumothorax or pneumomediastinum, if emphysema is severe, consider a major bronchial injury. 11. What rib fracture has the worst prognosis? First rib. First and second rib fractures are associated with bronchial tears, vascular injury, and myocardial contusions. 12. What cardiovascular injury is commonly associated with sternal fractures? Myocardial contusions, blunt myocardial injury. 13. How should hair be removed prior to wound repair? By clipping the hair around the wound, not by using razor preparation which increases infection rates. 14. Which valve is most commonly injured with blunt trauma? Aortic valve. 
15. What is the basic disorder contributing to the pathophysiology of compartment syndrome? Damage occurs to muscles or arteries within the muscle compartment. Increased pressure within these closed tissue spaces compromises blood flow to the muscle and nerve tissue. Pressure can be measured using a striker or other pressure manometer, art line setup, etc. Treatment is typically open fasciotomy. There are three prerequisites to the development of compartment syndrome. Limiting space. Increased tissue pressure. Decreased tissue perfusion. 16. Is the heat of firing significant enough to sterilize a bullet and its wound? No, contaminants from clothing, skin body surface, and from viscera can be carried along the bullet's path. 17. What is the currently approved emergency replacement therapy for massive hemorrhage? Type-specific, uncross-matched blood, available in 10 to 15 minutes, type O negative, whereas immediately life-saving in certain situations, carries the risk of life-threatening transfusion reactions. 18. Where are epidural hematomas located? Between the dura and inner table of the skull. The most common location is at the thinnest part of the skull near the temporal area, where the middle meningeal artery is most often torn or ruptured resulting in a collection of arterial blood. If large enough, the swelling can cause brain shift and possible death. 19. For a trauma victim, which test is most helpful for evaluating retroperitoneal organs? CT scan. 20. Where are subdural hematomas located? Beneath the dura and over the brain and arachnoid. Caused by tears of pial arteries or of bridging veins. Subdural typically becomes symptomatic within 24 hours, two weeks after injury. 21. Why is epinephrine added to local anesthesia? To increase the duration of the anesthesia, vasoconstriction decreases the rate of absorption. Epinephrine also causes vasoconstriction and decreases bleeding. It may weaken tissue defenses and increases the incidence of wound infection. 22. What is the most frequently injured organ with blunt trauma? Spleen. 23. What type of injury most commonly damages the pancreas? Penetrating trauma. 24. Inability to pass a nasogastric tube in a trauma victim suggests damage to what organ? Diaphragm, usually on the left. 25. What type of contrast medium should be used to evaluate the esophagus if traumatic injury is suspected? Gastrographin. If barium is used, it may leak out into the mediastinum or abdomen causing a severe reaction, pain, and scarring. 26. Describe the key features of spinal shock. Sudden areflexia which is transient and distal which lasts hours to weeks. BP is usually 80 to 100 mm of mercury with paradoxical bradycardia. 27. What are the two most commonly injured genitourinary organs? Kidney. Bladder, associated with pelvic fracture. 28. What factors increase the likelihood of wound infection? Dirty or contaminated wounds, stellate or crushing wounds, wounds longer than 5 cm, wounds older than 6 hours, retained foreign bodies, and infection-prone anatomic sites. 29. Which has greater resistance to infection, sutures or staples? Staples. 30. What types of wounds result in majority of tetanus cases? Lacerations, punctures, crush injuries. 31. True or false, it is acceptable to clip or shave an eyebrow if needed to repair the skin. False. Eyebrows are valuable landmarks. 15% will not ever regrow. 32. Characterize tetanus-prone wounds. Age of wound, more than 6 hours. Configuration, stellate wound. Depth, more than 1 cm. Mechanism of injury, missile, crush, burn, frostbite.
Signs of infection, present. Devitalized tissue, present. Contaminants, present. Denervated or ischemic tissue, present. 33. If a patient has been burned over his entire back, both legs, and right arm, what percentage of his body is considered to be burned? 63% burn percentages are calculated through the rule of nines. Face, 9%. Arms, 9% each. Front, 18%. Back, 18%. Legs, 18% each. 34. What life-threatening injury is associated with pelvic fractures? Severe hemorrhage, usually retroperitoneal or intraperitoneal. Up to 6 liters of blood can be accommodated in this space. Treatment may include stabilization of the fracture, internal or external fixators, and interventional radiology placement of material inside arteries to stop bleeding, embolize. 35. A normal person has a GCS of 15. 36. A dead person has a GCS of 3. 37. What is the most common mechanism of injury in the elderly? Falls, MVA, burns, assaults. 38. What type of breath sound will you hear when a pneumothorax is present? Decreased or absent breath sounds on the affected side with a collapsed lung. 39. What formula should be used to calculate the fluid requirements for resuscitation of a burn victim? For milliliters per kg per percent of total body surface area per day. One half of this is given in the first 8 hours, the other one half over the next 16 hours, known as Parkland formula. 40. Trauma victims are often denied narcotics until what condition is ruled out? A closed head injury. 41. Why is mannitol sometimes given in the treatment of head injuries? It is a powerful diuretic that will help reduce cerebral edema. 42. A trauma victim is admitted to MedSerg following an MVA. A physician diagnosed a C4 fracture and suddenly the patient's BP drops and his pulse slows. What could be a possible cause for these symptoms? Spinal shock related to spinal cord injury. 43. A client admitted to the floor with a C6 neck fracture. In what position should the patient be maintained? Supine with the head and neck midline and immobilized. 44. To prevent increased intracranial pressure in a patient with a head injury, what position should the head of the bed be in? Avoid neck flexion and position the patient with the head of the bed elevated 30 degrees. 45. After giving the drug mannitol to a patient with a head injury, what would be his, her expected urine output? It should increase dramatically. 46. In a trauma victim, what initial assessment should receive the highest priority? Establishing an open airway. 47. What is the primary cause of new onset seizures in adults over the age of 20? Trauma. 48. A patient was admitted to the hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. The physician determines that his patient requires emergency surgery, or he will die. However, the patient is unconscious and, therefore, is unable to sign the consent forms. No relatives can be found to give consent either. Can this surgery be performed? Yes, if the physician determines that the surgery is necessary to save the patient's life, it can be performed without consent. 49. The organ most severely affected in a blast injury. The lungs. 50. During a trauma exam, you note that a patient has one pupil that is larger than the other. Pressure on what cranial nerve is involved in producing this symptom? The third cranial nerve. 51. A patient has fallen out of their medserg bed after becoming confused and climbing up and over the rails. What would be a priority concern before moving this patient? Possible head trauma and or spine injury with spinal cord injury requiring head and neck immobilization.
52. What is the procedure for the emergency treatment of a burn victim? Assess the ABCs, apply sterile sheets to the burned area, and remove smoldering clothing. Use IB fluids to rehydrate the patient using the Parkland formula. 53. What are the signs and symptoms of a pneumothorax? Tachypnea, restlessness, hypotension, dyspnea, absent or diminished breath sounds, and possible hypoxia. 54. What are the signs and symptoms of hypovolemia? Rapid, weak pulse, low blood pressure, cool clammy skin, shallow respirations, oliguria or anuria, and lethargy. 55. What is battle sign? Bluish discolorations, bruising, or subcutaneous blood extravasated, behind the ears of patients who have sustained a basal or skull fracture. 56. Which parts of the skin are affected in a partial thickness burn? The epidermis and superficial aspect of the dermis. 57. How should neurogenic shock be best managed? Neurogenic shock is treated with replacement of volume deficit followed by vasopressors, such as neosinephrine. 58. A patient has a pelvic fracture with suspected bladder or ureteral injury. What test should be performed first, a cystogram or an intravenous pyelogram IVP? When a pelvic fracture is present or suspected, the cystogram is usually performed first so that the distal ureteral dye from the IVP will not mimic extravasation from the bladder. 59. A patient has an orbital floor fracture, what symptoms and signs might be seen? The most common symptom would be diplopia due to entrapment of the inferior rectus and inferior oblique muscles, and resultant paralysis of upward gaze. In addition, one would worry that the inferior orbital nerve could be damaged with paresthesia resulting to the lower lid, infraorbital area, and side of the nose. 60. What is the most common long bone fracture? The tibia. 61. Is the stomach more commonly injured with penetrating trauma or blunt trauma? The stomach is more commonly injured with penetrating trauma. 62. What should be done prior to insertion of a Foley catheter in a patent with a known pelvic fracture? Assess for possible urethral tear injuries, perineal bruising and blood at the meatus are potential signs. Radiological tests may be indicated to prove that there is not a urethral or GU injury. Also, a rectal exam should be done. 63. What are the signs and symptoms of acute pericardial tamponade? Triade of hypotension, elevated CVP, and tachycardia is usually indicative of either acute pericardial tamponade or attention pneumothorax in a traumatized patient. Muffled heart tones may be auscultated. 64. What is the mechanism of injury responsible for the greatest portion of injuries in the elderly? Falls. Most falls are caused by tripping but other medical causes underlying the initial fall should always be sought. 65. What RBC count is considered positive in a peritoneal lavage fluid analysis of a patient with blunt abdominal trauma? RBC counts of more than 100,000 per mm3 are considered positive for both penetrating and blunt trauma to the abdomen. 5,000 RBCs per mm3 is considered positive in a patient with low chest or high abdominal penetrating trauma, where diaphragmatic perforation is a possibility. 66. What is the most common cause of airway obstruction in trauma? CNS depression. 67. What is the cause of death secondary to an untreated tension pneumothorax? Decreased cardiac output. The vena cava is compressed resulting in decreased right heart blood return and concomitant severe compromise in stroke volume, blood pressure, and cardiac output. Cardiac arrhythmias can also occur. VTACH in a young apparently healthy person is due to attention pneumothorax until proven otherwise. 68. What is the most common fracture in the elderly? Hip fracture. 69. Signs of tension pneumothorax on physical exam include 
tachypnea, unilateral absent breath sounds, tachycardia, pallor, diaphoresis, cyanosis, tracheal deviation, hypotension, and neck vein distension. 70. What is the mechanism of a posterior urethral tear? Associated with pelvic fracture, urethral stricture, impotence, and incontinence. 71. A trauma patient is admitted to the med circ floor. She has a closed head injury with suspected elevated intracranial pressure. What treatments should be considered? Paralyze the patient and ventilate normally. Do not hyperventilate unless the victim is decompensating or bradycardic and hypotensive with impending brain herniation. Excessive hyperventilation will lower PCO2 and vasoconstrict the brain arteries, causing worsening symptoms and brain injury. Maintain normal fluid volume, avoid excess fluids. Elevate the head of the bed to 30 degrees after the C-spine has been cleared. Considered mannitol 500 milliliters of a 20% solution over 20 minutes for a 70 kilograms adult. Use of diuretics like furosemide is controversial. Steroids are no longer recommended. Barbiturate use is also not recommended. Mannitol use is also losing favor except in cases with sudden deterioration and suspected impending brain herniation. 72. The organ most commonly affected in a blast injury. The ears. If the blast victims have blood coming from their ears, ruptured tympanic membranes, they have a 50% chance of a serious internal blast injury. 73. What is the difference between intracapsular hip fracture versus extracapsular? Intracapsular hip fractures are those of the femoral head and neck which are inside the hip capsule, ligaments around joint. Extracapsular fractures involve the femoral trochanteric and shaft and are outside of the capsule. 74. When monitoring a pregnant female trauma victim, which vital signs are more likely to indicate hemodynamic instability the mother's or those of the fetus? The fetal heart rate is more sensitive to inadequate resuscitation. Remember that the mother may lose 10 to 20% of her blood volume without change in vital signs whereas the baby's heart rate may increase or decrease above 160 or below 120 indicating significant fetal distress. 75. A femoral pulse on exam indicates a BP of at least 60 mm of mercury. 76. An unconscious, 60-year-old patient is stabilized and admitted to the med circ floor with a head injury. An ECG shows significant ST segment elevation. What is your concern? Although MI should be considered, don't forget the possibility of an intracerebral hemorrhage. This may also cause significant ST segment elevation. 77. How soon can fat embolism syndrome occur following a long bone fracture? 12 to 72 hours. 78. A trauma patient presents with a complaint of severe burning pain in the upper extremities and associated neck pain. On physical exam, the patient has good strength in his upper extremities and no obvious neurologic deficits in the lower extremities. Although the C-spine series is negative, what problem is still suspected? Central cord syndrome. This injury is due to hyperextension of the spinal cord. Diagnostic findings include upper extremity neurologic symptoms and minimal or no lower extremity symptoms. Tingling, paresthesias, burning pain, and severe weakness or paralysis in the upper extremities with little or no symptoms in the lower extremities. 79. A patient is admitted for observation overnight after an MVA motor vehicle accident, with a history of high-speed traumatic injury to the chest. His initial exam per report was normal. On the med circ floor, your physical exam reveals a systolic murmur over the precordium auscultated. The patient has a slightly hoarse voice and worsening chest pain. The pulse is also stronger in the upper extremities. What do you suspect? Traumatic rupture of the aorta. 80. 
What are the two basic mechanisms for elevated compartment pressure? External compression by burn eschar, circumferential casts, dressings, or pneumatic pressure garments. Volume increase within the compartment hemorrhage into the compartment, IB infiltration, or edema due to post ischemic swelling. 81. A client has a C6 neck fracture. In what position should the patient be maintained? Supine with the head and neck midline and immobilized. 82. Which two fractures are most commonly associated with compartment syndrome? Tibia, resulting most often in anterior compartment involvement, and supracondylar humerus fractures. 83. What would be a priority nursing intervention for a client with fat embolism syndrome? Ensure adequate oxygenation and ventilation due to the impaired gas exchange, shortness of breath, abnormal X-ray of lung may be found. Contact the physician, consider transfer to the ICU. 84. What are the early general signs and symptoms of compartment syndrome? Early findings, 1. Tenderness and pain out of proportion to the injury, 2. Pain with active and passive motion, and 3. Hyperthesia, paresthesia, abnormal two-point discrimination. Late findings, 1. Compartment tense, indurated, and erythematous, 2. Slow capillary refill, and 3. Pallor and pulselessness. 85. What are the 5 PS of compartment syndrome? Pain, pallor, pulselessness, paresthesias, and paralysis. 86. A patient is admitted with a tibia fracture and a cast is placed by the orthopedic surgeon. The patient complains of pain, and the med surg nurse elevates the leg appropriately, but soon the pain is even worse. What should be suspected? Compartment syndrome. Pain is the most common symptom of compartment syndrome due to tissue ischemia. Elevating the limb decreases arterial circulation, thus the pain is worsened in these patients. Normally it will decrease pain in patients with uncomplicated fractures. The doctor should be notified immediately and a thorough neurovascular exam will likely be abnormal. Removal of the cast is indicated along with possible surgery to decompress the lower leg compartments. 87. Following a fall, a patient is admitted and observed, with a swollen, bruised wrist. A possible fracture is suspected. What should you assess in relation to this? Assess the area distal to the possible fracture for signs of neurovascular compromise. 88. Following casting, what would be the first symptom that would alert you to possible compartment syndrome? Pain that is disproportionate to the injury. 89. What is a stress fracture? A stress or fatigue fracture is caused by small, repetitive forces, usually involving the metatarsal shafts, the distal tibia, or the femoral neck. These fractures may not be seen on initial radiographs. 90. What physical findings are typical for a patient with a hip fracture? The leg on the affected side is usually shorter, abducted and externally rotated. Pain is also present. 91. A trauma patient who is semi-comatose is brought to the surgical floor and the nurse notices crepitus, or a gritting sensation whenever they palpate and move the right upper arm. What does this mean? Crepitation is used to describe the feeling of bone fragments rubbing together when a fracture is present. An X-ray will likely reveal a fracture. 92. Who gets Achilles tendon rupture? Middle-aged men who play weekend sports occasionally, occurs most commonly on the left side. 93. What is the difference between a closed versus an open fracture? A closed fracture has the nearby skin intact. An open fracture s a broken bone with the nearby skin lacerated, punctured, or otherwise injured so that bacteria can potentially contaminate the bone fracture site. A sharp bone fragment may lacerate or puncture the skin. Open fractures represent a surgical emergency and ideally these patients are taken to the OR for thorough debridement and cleansing to decrease the chance of osteomyelitis and other infections.
What is a green stick fracture? A fracture in which a break in only one cortex of the bone occurs, usually due to minor or indirect force. The X-ray shows the fracture through about one half of the bone, with the cortex intact on the other side. 95. A patient cannot actively abduct her shoulder. What injury does this suggest? Rotator cuff tear. The cuff comprises the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and the teres minor muscles and tendons. 96. What is a transverse fracture? What is an oblique fracture? What is a spiral fracture? A transverse fracture that is at approximately a 90-degree angle to the bone, extending horizontally through the bone. An oblique fracture extends at an oblique angle across both cortices of the bone. A spinal fracture is a fracture that curves around both cortices and is usually due to twisting force, with the distal part of the bone held or unable to move. 97. Most common should dislocation? Anterior, 95%. 98. What is the purpose of traction in regards to a fracture? To realign bone fragments, decrease pain, decrease neurovascular injury, and to decrease the potential space around the fracture by pulling the proximal and distal bone fragments apart, which increase the muscle tension and resulting in less bleeding. A closed femur fracture can cause up to 1 L of blood loss internally if not stabilized and traction applied. 99. What is the most common metatarsal fracture? Fifth. 100. What is your role in regard to maintaining traction in a patient? Make sure the ways hang freely, are properly positioned, and the patient is in the proper position in bed. 101. What is the age group that has the highest hip fracture rate? Elderly, especially older women who are at risk for falls and have osteoporosis. 102. How long after a fracture does a callus start to form? 5 to 7 days. 103. What is the most common mechanism for fractures of the femoral condyles? Direct trauma, fall or blow to the distal femur. 104. Why would a physician perform an arthrocentesis on a knee with a severe acute hemarthrosis? Relieve pressure and pain and to help diagnosis if fat globules are present indicating a fracture. 105. What is the most common ankle injury? 75% of ankle injuries are sprains, with 90% of these involving the lateral complex. 90% of lateral ligament injuries are anterior talofibular. 106. A med surg nurse should consider what serious problems in any patient who suddenly complains of back pain. Abdominal aortic aneurysm, cauda equine syndrome, compression of lower spinal nerves tumor or acute bleed into the spinal column or peritoneum, bowel infarction, kidney stone or infection, and others. 107. How are sprains classified? First stretching of ligament, normal x-ray. Second severe stretching with partial tear, marked tenderness, swelling, pain, normal x-ray, now stressed. Third complete ligament rupture, marked tenderness, swelling, and obviously deformed joint. X-ray may show an abnormal joint. 108. What is the term that describes the inflammation of the synovial cavity surrounding a joint? Bursitis. 109. What is unique about avulsion fractures at the base of the fifth metatarsal? It is one of the most commonly missed fractures, history is of ankle injury from plantar flexion and inversion. 110. Describe the leg position in a patient with a posterior hip dislocation. Shortened, adducted, and internally rotated. 90% of hip dislocations. Force applied to a flexed knee directed posteriorly, commonly from a car accident with dashboard injury. Associated with sciatic nerve injury, 10%, and avascular necrosis of the femoral head. 111. What is the appropriate initial nursing intervention when caring for an open wound near a fracture? Grossly decontaminate, rinse briefly with sterile saline, then cover with wet sterile dressings. 
112. After application of a traction splint to a femur fracture, what should the nurse assess? Check the neurovascular status distal to the fracture. Monitor for skin condition and avoid complications of excessive pressure. 113. Describe the leg position in a patient with an anterior hip dislocation. Hip is abducted and externally rotated. 10% of hip dislocations. Mechanism is forced abduction. If anterior superior, hip is extended. If anterior inferior, hip is flexed. 114. A medserg nurse is examining a nursing home patient who is admitted with confusion and dehydration. The nurse notes that the patient's right leg is shorter than the other leg, is externally rotated, and the patient moans when the lower leg is moved. The likely diagnosis is hip fracture. 115. Describe the appropriate basic care of an amputated body part. Gently clean to remove debris, wrap in normal saline soaked gauze, place in plastic bag, and seal in place on a solution of ice and water. Do not allow the part to freeze or to become macerated. Do not place directly on ice as the temperature is usually 10 degrees below freezing and may cause frostbite or tissue damage. The part must also be labeled and placed slash transported with the patient. 116. What are the four basic treatment components when treating muscle strains and ligament sprains? Rest, ice, compression dressing, and elevation. The mnemonic, rice. The temperature of ice is often below freezing and could cause frostbite. Therefore, ice should be placed in a bag with water and applied in contact with the injured area alternating 20 minutes on and 20 minutes off for most of the first 24 hours. Following this, the moist heat and gently increasing range of motion exercises and stretching will aid in healing and recovery. Prolonged immobilization is unnecessary and potentially harmful. 117. What are key nursing considerations for patients in skeletal or skin traction when being treated for fractures? Check the entire traction setup, pin sites, and all suspension apparatus for signs of loosening or excessive tension. Ensure that weight slash traction is constant, including during nursing care. Check all skin surfaces for signs of pressure and provide physical psychological comfort. 118. What is the rational for the initial immobilization of a fracture? To prevent damage to blood vessels, tissues and nerves, and also to decrease pain level. 119. A medserg nurse is taking care of a patient with multiple fractures including a femur fracture. The patient develops confusion, shortness of breath, faster breathing, and tachycardia, hypotension and petechiae about 12 hours after admission. What syndrome is likely developing? Fat embolism syndrome, where the fat from inside of the bone migrates to the vein, back to the heart and embolizes throughout the body. Symptoms may be minor or may result in ARDS and death. 120. A medserg nurse is preparing a patient for surgery of the hip fracture. What important steps should be performed? Monitor vital signs. Watching for hypotension as up to 1,000 cc of blood can be lost into the femur or hip fracture. Monitor for hypothermia and other complications of trauma. Ensure the pre-op medical screening is completed by the physician, along with appropriate tests. Keep patient NPO, have the patient empty the bladder or place Foley catheter. Send an abduction pillow to the OR if indicated, as it is used to keep prosthetic hips joints in proper position. Ensure proper Tetanus immunization Ensure that the consent form is signed after the doctor discusses the plan and operation with patient and family. Arrange for preoperative antibiotics if ordered. If a transfusion of blood needed, then take a timeout and ensure that the patient is properly matched. 121. A patient in balanced suspension traction for a fractured femur needs repositioning toward the head of the bed. What is the proper technique regarding the traction when moving the patient?
maintain the same degrees of traction tension, do not release or lift the traction during repositioning. 122. A medserg nurse taking care of a post-op hip fracture patient should ensure what important steps? Monitor vital signs and neurovascular status, watch for signs of post-op bleeding and infection, perform dressing changes, watch for possible fat or pulmonary embolism, administer appropriate anticoagulant and use external pneumatic compression device or stockings, monitor wound drainage, Position limb appropriately, abduction if a prosthesis was used, neutral if not, turn patient. Encourage deep breathing and coughing often, use incentive spirometer every hour while awake monitor INOS. Get the patient to exercise in bed and get up and active as soon as the surgeon allows, control pain. Teach the patient proper use of walker or appropriate weight bearing, and provide support for the patient and family members. Arrange appropriate discharge and ensure adequate supplies and support for the patient when they return home. Arrange appropriate discharge and ensure adequate supplies and support for the patient when they return home. 123. True or false. When teaching the patient crutch walking, all the weight should be placed in the hands rather than the axilla. True. Placing pressure on the axilla could cause nerve damage. 124. Lower back pain is usually caused by. Describe risk factors for this. Musculoskeletal strains or sprain. Risk factors include obesity, poor body mechanisms, and lifting heavy objects. 125. What is osteoarthritis? A non-inflammatory joint disease causing degenerative joint disease caused by the wear and tear on weight-bearing joints. Obesity increases this wear and tear, and can worsen osteoarthritis. 126. What are the causes of osteoporosis? Insufficient intake of calcium and vitamin D, smoking, menopausal decreases in estrogen, immobility, long-term steroid use, and caffeine-slash-soda intake. 127. What is osteomyelitis? An acute or chronic infection of the bone or bone marrow, usually affecting the long bones, femur, tibia, humerus, and vertebrae, but an infection can rise in any bone, especially with recent local trauma. Long-term antibiotics, six weeks or more, and possible surgery are required for the treatment. 128. What is osteoporosis? A systemic disease in which bone mass and bone density decrease between bone resorption and bone deposition. It may begin as early as age 30, but progresses rapidly after age 45 to 50. 70% of women older than age 45 have osteoporosis. These people are at increased risk of bone fracture and chronic pain. A common cause is inadequate dietary intake of calcium. After age 35, women cannot add calcium to their bones. Inadequate indigestion of calcium results in the body taking calcium from the bones which can never be replaced. Thank you for watching. Open your wings and follow your dreams. Aim high and pass the board exam. God bless all.